Justin, have you been able to uh, put the weekend behind you and move on? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, yeah, we're really conscious of learning from the game on the weekend and really conscious of being able to move on and making sure we yeah, fully focus on this week. In terms of what you have learned, I guess the major learning might have come from the early part of the game? Yeah, absolutely. So we uh, you re reviewed that pretty heavily and we don't want to be in that situation. So, uh, yeah, we need to get our contest work a lot better and, um, yeah, we need to execute the basics under under pressure a lot better than we did early in the game. Is it as simple as those fundamentals? I've heard some people say what you did was recover from, a, from an early onset stage fright. Okay? Well, I don't know whether it was stage fright, but, yeah, we did, definitely didn't handle the pressure that they brought. Um, and that led to, yeah, not getting the basics and execution right. So... I think that was reflected in our goal kicking early. Uh, first six shots were yeah, th for three points only. So, um, yeah, we need to execute better, but we need to be able to buffer the opposition's pressure a lot better than that. The starts have been an issue at times this year. Can, can you put your finger on, on why it pops up from time to time? Uh, not really. No, just uh, probably, um, yeah, not want to go into too much now, but it has usually been around that contest stuff and the extra intensity that the opposition have bought and um, the ability to buffer um, that pressure when, yeah, you're not on the front foot. And, um, yeah, quite often we fuel the opposition's pressure. So, um, yeah, we want to try and avoid that as much as we can. How conscious are you that, yeah, last week you had to feed off the crowd and build back into the game, but with the Magpie Army there, that's not going to be enough to make it? Yeah, oh, look, the crowd probably played a, a part of it and definitely helped, um, and it does help your mindset. But I, I was I was seeing a lot of good stuff in terms of connection and communication from our players on the field. I, I did, you know, the week before against GWS, I thought we internalised a fair bit and went into our own heads, and um, we relied on probably individuals to get us out of that. Whereas I thought it was a bit more of a collective team effort to remain on task and connected on the weekend. So um, if we maintain that mindset, um, the crowds are relevant, I reckon. So what will you do with Matt Taverner this weekend? Oh, we'll see how he gets through training. And then we've got, yeah, decisions to be made uh, on yeah on selection and what our forward line looks like. So, um, yeah, Tab's obviously return on the weekend. Um, the decision will be whether he's ready to come into, um, you know, a a really intense final, or um, he needs another week. Does it feel like a risk? Uh, probably haven't really felt anything yet. They just talk through the, the um, yeah, what's on the table, and um, haven't really had a discussion with the match committee yet. So, um, yeah, we'll weigh that up. Justin, what have your discussions been like with Matt? Is he played in his case? How, how's he yeah, he's, he's played in his case. He, he wants to play, but uh, he understood the reasons last week. Um, you know, he's been at the club for a long period of time and he's been searching and been preparing for these type of situations. So he, he desperately wants to to be out there and, and contribute. But <clears throat> on the flip side, he definitely doesn't want to let the team down. So, um, and, you know, as this match committee will always put um, the team first. So... Well, there's, yeah, there's a fair bit to weigh up this afternoon. How are the players feeling, Justin, about 90,000 at the NCG? Uh, I think, yeah, I think they're, they're embracing it and they're really excited about the opportunity. I think uh, um, we've got a really good platform of, of form on the road this year that we can learn from and build off. Um, yeah, so I think the crowd, the, the crowd factor is just another little distraction we need to overcome, but... Uh, I think we've got a pretty good flat platform for preparation on the road, so we'll um, stick to what works. Can the team prepare for playing in front of minimum 85,000 Collingwood fans? Well, it's hard to prepare. We could get all these supporters out there to start booing us every time we do something well, but it probably won't get the same sort of feel. But I think it's worth talking about some of those things and understanding that, you know, they get control of the game and the crowd gets on their side, how we, how we prepare for that and how we counter that. So... Um, spoken about a few things already, but you know, our connection and relying on each other is going to be really important. Just back on selection, Justin Griffin likes a pretty versatile player. Would he be an option for a sub? Oh, it probably hasn't come to my mind as a sub, but <clears throat> yeah, we understand he can play at both ends of the ground and he gives us really good flexibility pre-game and in-game. So yeah, there'll be a few um, scenarios getting thrown around the Savo. Um, Ellie 
pressure you spoke about when it's thicker for Collingwood for it to be Geelong game and how do you prepare for something like that? Well, I thought... Well, I thought Western Bulldogs brought good pressure for us. So we had a good look at that. And, um, you know, we, I think, um, you know, we played wet game against West Coast who have been bringing really good pressure in the second half of the year, which was really good prelude to finals. I thought GWS brought really good pressure in the first half. Um, so we, we've had some looks at it. Um, and I thought that, yeah, Geelong brought good pressure as well when it led to a high pressure game. So, um, yeah, we, we will embrace the pressure they bring and try and buffer it the best we can. But we also need to focus on what we do well and focus on our pressure because I think it's a real strength of our game when we when we get it right. You see the contrast in game styles as a bit of control versus chaos. You yourself with the control and then with the power. Uh, no, I probably haven't really thought of it like that. I think um, a lot of our scoring opportunities last week came off the back of trusting the contest ahead of the play and our four, small forwards getting to work in a chaotic sort of brand as well. So I think we can score that way. And um, when we're playing our best footy, it's off the back of our elite pressure and and run from, from our small forwards that sort of bring that chaotic look as well. So, yeah, make it what you want and call it what you want. But I, I think we can play a chaos brand. And I think um, we play our best footy when we play like that sometimes. So, um, yeah. And what have you made of their turnaround in general? Season, to to the top oh well, they've yeah, they've obviously changed some of their game plan. Um, they seem like a really connected, positive club, and um, yeah, I think they they've got brought some youth in, which has added some real energy to the group. But I also see a lot of experience there, and experience in big games, and a lot of players that have played a lot of footy across all their all the lines of their of their team. So. Yeah, they've got a good balance of youth and experience and they're playing a really solid brand of footy and they all look on the same page. So, yeah, looking forward to a really good challenge this week against a really good side. An important player like Darcy Moore. Justin, what's the, the best way to make sure he doesn't have the... Yeah, I think it's going to be really important the way we kick the ball to our, our tall forwards and engage their backs. Um, yeah, Murphy, Moore, Howe... Um, you know, and, and their smaller backs have been really good this year and been able to defend really well as a collective. So, um, yeah, we need to make sure we give our forwards a chance. Mr. Goey, someone that come into your thinking at all? Oh, I haven't really thought about that. No, no, we'll think our, our forwards are probably better, a little bit more proactive and, and um, giving them a bit of a licence to be creative, I think, with, when we played our best footy. The Goey performed well in finals and did last week. Is that someone you guys might put a bit of attention towards? On the weekend? Yeah, yeah, it's it'll definitely come come up in selection. Um, you know, he was involved in a lot of their scores last week. Um, he's a really dangerous player. Uh, yeah, but we just can't let the others get off the chain either. Um, I, th I don't think they've been relying on individuals this year. It's been a collective, and um, it's been a game style that they all contribute to. So, um, yeah. Uh, Pendles is just as important as well, so we need to make sure we win that midfield battle. Back on selection, sorry, Steve. Um, there's no force changes on the weekend. No, no. So no. are you expecting Jai to play again? Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm thinking he'll put his hand up for selection. Yeah, he's pulled up well. Um, he trains well today. He'll put his hand up. He, he, can, he yeah, pulled up well from the game. So, how ready is Jai for what will potentially be a, a tougher one -on matchup for him? Um. Yeah, uh, I thought he had pretty, he played on a pretty experienced player last week. Um, yeah, we might not get the delivery as, as uh, cleanly into him at times last week, but thought he, I thought he competed really well in, con in aerial contests, which will hold him in good stead this week. And um, I would imagine he would only grow off last week and, and build off last week. I thought he handled the occasion really well and he's a really mature player. So, he, and I, I, he's a really grounded player, so that, yeah, he'll get to work and be another great experience for him. Nathan Lee Driscoll looked a little banged up towards the end. Yeah, yeah, he rolled that ankle, but yeah, that's pulled up really well. And he got a bit of a corky, but I'd expect him to push through that today and and um, put his hand up for selection. And just for you personally, it was your first taste of being coached in the final. In terms of the emotions, how different is it to <clears throat> coach to a player in those sort of situations? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty similar on game day, to be honest. Um, pre-game you do feel a little bit um, yeah a little bit of pressure and 
probably drift to the outcome thinking a little bit um, more than in season. But come game day, you don't get drawn into the crowd because you don't really hear it in the coach's box and it becomes really similar to any other game. So I thought we, as a coaching group, we waded our way through it pretty well. And given your playing career was cut short by injury, do you savour these big moments more than it's like almost a second crack? No, not really. And no, I don't think of it like that. It's not about me. You know, it's about me helping the players to succeed. And that's the way I see it. It's not about what I can get out of it. What roles in that fight playing this weekend in terms of preparing for the stage that you've got to um, sort of play on? Like guys like Monday, Walters, so that you this week? Yeah, it's, it, it's good to have those guys around to impart their experiences and knowledge and, um, yeah can quite often share some things that can help our younger players. So, uh, yeah, they, they, all, they all play their part and they're all doing a good job at that. Have you still got some friendships and links at Parliament? Uh, yeah, still got some friendships and links. No one's talking to me this week. But, um, yeah, uh, I enjoyed a couple of, couple of years there and had a bit of success and won a lot of games and, yeah, really enjoyed that experience. So... Yeah, got a lot of respect for them as a footy club. Did you see your time there as sort of an important part of your development? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. No, it was a massive part of my development. Yep, and thanks to the club for that opportunity. Will that fight travel? Yeah, he will. Yep. Yeah, he's keen to be around the group and, yeah, share some of those experiences, but, yeah, just be around the group, which is great. Have you changed up your travel routines to go two days out before you like that? Uh, no, it was just how it fell. And, um, yeah, we think that... That serves us well on day games and, yeah, we'll just prepare around sitting in the hotel room for a little bit longer on game day and probably the day before, but um, it's worked well for us across the year and, yeah, so we want to stick to that. Michael Walters' record in finals is remarkable. <coughs> what, what makes him so special? Uh, no. I think the thing that prepares him really well um, for is two things. Uh, a, he embraces the moment and... Um, yeah, really, yeah, that, that doesn't allow him to get overawed. But he trains at a standard that's final standard. He's, um, he puts himself under pressure at training. He trains at an intensity which holds him in really good stead in those big moments. So um, oh, yeah, I think that's the main factor. It seemed like it took him a while to, to embrace that forward role. Again, have you seen that evolve? It has a little bit, taken him a little bit of time, but... Um, I actually went to him across the pre-season and said, oh, maybe there's opportunity on the wing and we can spend a little bit of time in midfield. And he said, no, I just want to embrace this forward role. You've given it to me. I want to make sure I bring my leadership to the forward role and I want to make sure I embrace it. So I'm happy just to be down there. And, um, yeah, the way he's embraced the defensive side of the game, his leadership and his contest has set him up to impact on the scoreboard. So yeah, he's been one of our better forwards across the year. So he's done a great job.